Good evening once again, Ohana kids. Uh, I want to welcome you all to tonight's message that we have. Um, last week, you know, we talked about Peter walking on the water and having that faith in God. Uh, tonight I want to talk to you all a little bit something that everybody faces, especially young kids nowadays, and that's peer pressure and how to deal with peer pressure. And we're going to look in the Bible about three particular men that took a stand against peer pressure. And the stand that they took, it could have costed them their lives, but the fact that they stood against the negative part of the peer pressure and that they stood for God, they had that strong foundation, it brought them through it. All right, and we'll get to who who those three men are here in a little bit. But if you have your Bibles, I want you to go ahead and open your Bibles up to Daniel chapter 3. Right. So school isn't always easy. School isn't always fun. You know, first of all, you have studying, you got to uh, read, you got to do homework. And even now that we're quarantined, you still have homework to do. Your teachers, if you go to a school, your teachers uh, send you work to do that you have to do online and stuff like that. And it's not always fun. It's a bummer, but it's one of those things that's necessary in life. Second, if you go to a traditional school, there's hundreds of other students at your school who you interact with every day. And you have to find a way to get along with those people and be a light that points them to Jesus. You may be that only light that points them to Jesus that they may ever know. And that's a big responsibility that we have as Christians. Every time you walk into school, or e even if you're not walking into school, even when you walk into church or uh, the grocery store, wherever you go, you have a great opportunity to strengthen your faith. And like I said, today we're going to talk about peer pressure. Right? And I want you to take a minute to think about what peer pressure means to you or what your definition of peer pressure is. And just think about that. So peer pressure is defined as the feeling that someone your own age is pushing you toward making a certain choice. And that certain choice can be a good or a bad choice. N not always necessarily bad. Whenever we think about peer pressure, we always assume that it's in a negative connotation. But that's not always true. If you surround yourself with people who um, do good at school or who are into studying and making good grades or excel at sports, then you're going to push yourself to excel at sports or to excel at um, getting your education. And that's not, that's not a bad thing. But there are those other kids that you're going to be around that do push you to make the bad choices. Peer pressure is very powerful. We all want to fit in. And we all want to be part of the group. Nobody likes to be outside the group. Everybody wants to be a part. And sometimes this means that we do things that we wouldn't normally do just so we could fit in. We may do things that we know are wrong just so we could fit in. So I have a little demonstration. Um, I have some dominoes set up. And peer pressure is a lot like these dominoes. And if you look, let me show you, this first line of dominoes right here, peer pressure is a lot like these dominoes. If I push the first domino, the pressure of it falling will cause the next domino to fall and so on and so forth. Then each domino in the line falls like the one before. So you think of that first domino as a friend that has a negative impact on your life. And you push him over and it knocks you down. And then somebody who you have a influence on will knock them down. 
And then it just keeps going down because nobody is going to have that foundation to stand up. So when you face peer pressure, you need to take a stand for what you know is right. And most of us being raised in church, knowing the Bible, we're having some knowledge of the Bible. We know what's wrong and we know what's right. Uh, you will have a choice to be like one of these dominoes and just go with the flow, or you can stand up for what is right. God gives us that choice, that free will to make that uh, choice, and he expects us to make the right choice. So how do you know what is right? We can know what is right by studying God's Word and applying it to our lives. That's why we go to church. That's why, you know, your parents take you to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday nights. If there's a missions conference or revival, every time the doors open, you should be at church. And that's to help you grow so that when things like this come around, we know what to do is right. You can be pressured in a lot of ways, at school, um, even just around your neighborhood if you're hanging out with the wrong type of friends. You can be pressured to look a certain way or act a certain way that really goes against God's Word, goes against what God's Word teaches us. In those situations, you have to make the choice of how you will stand up to that pressure. Are you going to be like the second or third domino in this line and just fall? Or are you going to take a stand against it? In the Old Testament, there is a great example of how to stand against peer pressure. And we're going to look at a story that I'm sure most of you have heard of before. And it's about three guys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like I said, make sure you turn to uh, Daniel the book of Daniel is in the Old Testament in chapter 3. So the book of Daniel tells us about a king named Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king of Babylon, and one day Nebuchadnezzar and his army marched into Jerusalem, and they took over. They made all the people slaves, and they took the most promising young men back to Babylon with them. Well, four of those bright young men were Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. All right, once they arrived in Babylon, they were given names. And the Bible says that Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah had their names changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as we know them now. These were special young men who were dedicated to serving the one true God. All right, the people of Babylon, they didn't worship the one true God. In fact... They had many gods and often worshipped idols and other objects. And now we all know that worshipping anything else besides the one true God is wrong. We should only uh, worship God and not idols or anything like that. And when we talk about idols, we're not, we don't always, especially nowadays, we're not just talking about golden statues or other gods there may be things that we put before God that we're worshiping, and we may not think of it. If you have like a game system or a um, a book that you're just always into, and you'd rather read that book instead of you know studying God's word um, or things like that, certain toys that we might have that we put before God, then that soon becomes an idol to us. <clears throat> And like I said, they had many gods and they worshipped uh, other idols and other objects. Well, Daniel 3 tells us that King Nebuchadnezzar had built a golden image that was about 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. This thing was massive. If you think about 90 feet high, I think it's huge. It's taller than our church that we go to. It's taller than the church building. And it's 9 feet wide. Imagine. Just imagine if you had 15 men, and all of these men were 6 foot tall at least, not my height, but probably about 15 men that were about the, the height of Brother Jerome, all standing on one another's shoulders. 15 of them stacked up. 
that's about equal to the height that the golden image was that King Nebuchadnezzar had built. So we read in Daniel chapter 3 what King Nebuchadnezzar did next. And starting in verse 4, Daniel chapter 3 and verse 4 through 7, it says, Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, talking about everybody, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So we see in these verses that Nebuchadnezzar, he had that image built. He had that golden image built that when all the music played or when the music played and everybody heard that music play, everybody was to stop immediately what they were doing and bow down and worship this false god or this uh, statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had built. And anybody that didn't, it tells us in verse 6, that would be they would be thrown into the midst of a fiery furnace. When the horn blew, all the people would bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. All the people except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bow down to the idol like everyone else. And why do you think they refused to bow down to this idol? Everybody else was doing it. Everybody else in all the land, as soon as they heard this music, they immediately bowed down. It's like if you're here on one of the bases and it's either early in the morning or at night when we have Reveille or Retreat, which is Reveille is when they raise the American flag up on base and Retreat is when they lower it. When we hear that music, we're supposed to stop immediately what we do Turn and face the flag and salute the flag. Now, I'm not saying that's worshiping the flag or anything. That's just um, what we're supposed to do. We're not putting it above God, uh, anything like that. It's just the right thing to do as being an American citizen. So, sh like I said, why, why do you think, what, what do you think their reasoning was why they didn't bow down? Just think about that for a second. You know, all of your friends are doing it. Everybody around you is doing it. And you and your two other friends are just standing there like, um, all right, we're just going to stand here. We're not going to do what everybody else does. Why do you think they did that? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew in their hearts what was right and what was wrong. They understood God's commands, and they wanted to be obedient to Him, just like we should be. We should always be obedient to God, and we should always obey God's Word and what He tells us in His Bible or in His Word. This meant that they had to take a stand to be different than everyone else, even though there might be consequences. And they knew what those consequences were. And those consequences were that they would be thrown into a fiery furnace. So when Nebuchadnezzar had learned that these boys refused to bow down, he was furious. He was like, how could somebody go against what I say? Like, how could these three guys think that they're not going to do what I say? I'm the king of all the land. I have made this decree. Everybody's supposed to follow it. He demanded that they bow down or that they be thrown into the fiery furnace. And we see going on chapter or chapter 3 and verse 16, we see what the boys told Nebuchadnezzar. And we read, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods 
nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had told King Nebuchadnezzar, like, look, we know what you say. We know what the law is. But we know that our God is stronger than you. Our God is more powerful than you and this fake God that you had made. And if it be so, then God will deliver us from this fiery furnace. And if not, then that's what God's will was. And they still will not bow down, even if it means that they die. So Nebuchadnezzar was so angry that he couldn't see straight. He just, he was seeing nothing but red. He heated the furnace seven times hotter than it had ever been heated. He took the three boys and he threw them into the furnace. Now, this fire was so hot that the Bible says that the guards who threw the boys into the fire were immediately killed because they got too close. That's how hot the fire was. Imagine a fire so hot that just getting close to it kills you. When the boys were thrown in there, something amazing happened. They didn't burn. As the king and his men looked into the furnace, they saw not only three men in there, they saw four. They saw four men walking around in that fire, not being burned at all. King Nebuchadnezzar called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out of the fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they walked out of this fiery furnace with no burns, no singe tears, not even the smell of smoke on their clothes. You know, when I grill or you're at a campfire and you just get around that smoke, you smell like smoke for the rest of the day. Well, these boys were in the midst of that fiery furnace and their clothes did not even smell like smoke. We continue to read on in chapter 3 and verse 28 the response that King Nebuchadnezzar had. And it says, in verse 20, starting in verse 28, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered, delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. You see, after King Nebuchadnezzar had seen this, he was so... He was so in awe that he realized that the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had served was the one true God. And he made a decree that anybody that speaks against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God, which is the one true God, our Lord and Savior, that they would be cut into pieces and their houses would be made a dunghill. See, that's, that's the power of God. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego... They made that choice to stand against the peer pressure of everybody else. While their peers were bowing down to the golden image, they chose to be faithful and obedient to God. Even when it cost them, they stood firm and did what is right, just like we should do. In your school or in your neighborhood or when you're with your friends, you're going to be tempted by peer pressure. And it's only going to get worse the older you get, especially when you get into middle school and high school, that peer pressure just starts to build up. And it's going to be harder and harder to stand against it. But you need to make those right decisions because we all know what's right. You know, it, it, you may be tempted to wear certain clothes in order to fit in with the popular crowd or to say certain things or act a certain way. And it may be pressure to uh, you may have that pressure to bully or make fun of others. And we all know that that's wrong. And we shouldn't do that. You may also be tempted just to fade in the background and never let anyone know about your faith in God. You know, when negative pressure comes, um, you will have to make that choice. A choice to go with the flow or take a stand for what is right. So remember... In the beginning of this lesson, when I showed you that one row of dominoes, what had happened to them? They all fell, one after another, under the pressure. 
But what if one of them took a stand for what is right? What if one of them was able to withstand and hold firm in an upright position? What do you think would happen? Maybe it would be something like this. You see, even when all the other dominoes were falling and there was a ton of pressure, this domino right here stood firm. You know, it, it had a lot of help to stand because it was anchored to the foundation. Our foundation is God's word. And it shows us what is wrong and it shows us what is right. If we have that strong foundation and we stand on God's word, then nothing will be able to push us over. Nothing will be able to pressure us to do what we know is wrong. God's word shows us what is right, what is wrong, so that we can be prepared to take a stand when pressure comes. So when you face pressure at school or in your neighborhood or even when you're out like on the playground and people are talking, saying bad words, things like that, you need to take a stand for what you know is right. Now, let's go ahead and pray and just have a moment with God. Lord, I want to thank you for all of these kids. I thank you for uh, allowing each one of them to be able to have the technology so that even though we're quarantined, we can still learn about you and learn about your truth in your word. Lord, I thank you for showing us through Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that if we are just to obey your word and obey what you say, that you will take care of us no matter what the situation is. Lord, we may not be thrown into a literal fiery furnace to where we could get burned up and die. But Lord, there's other things that happen to us when we stand against that peer pressure. And I ask that you would just give each one of these kids and myself even, Lord, the strength that we need to stand up against that peer pressure. Lord, I, I thank you for each one of these kids and um, Lord, just giving them the time to be able to uh, listen to this message. Lord, I love you and I thank you for everything you've done. I ask that you would just continue to be with us, continue to be with our government leaders and our healthcare workers and every all these essential workers that still go to work every day. Lord, just protect them and keep them safe. Lord, be with each one of these kids' parents, Lord, uh, whether you know they're at home by themselves um, their spouse may be deployed or off working, Lord. I pray that you would just give them the strength that they need and help these kids to be helpers for their parents. Lord, I love you and I thank you once again for all that you've done for us, all the many blessings that you've given to us. For your name I pray, amen. I thank each and every one of y'all for coming tonight and listening to this message. I hope that you got something out of it. And while you're at home, if you have a set of dominoes, you know, what you can do with your siblings is set, set the dominoes up in, you know, different forms, different shapes, and push them down. Have a little fun with it. Make one of the dominoes have a strong foundation that shows that with, uh, with the foundation of God, we will not be pushed over and we will be able to withstand against that pressure. I love each and every one of y'all, and I can't wait to see y'all again. Y'all have a good night.